Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Well, today my guest is Nick Vasilievich, who is the managing director of Pilotfish, a Dutch German design and innovation company here in Taiwan. In fact, it started in Taiwan. Well, let's first welcome Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Shirley. Good morning, and thank you for having me here. No problem. It's good to have you here. And actually, the office is in Neihu, which is not too far from the radio station, no, right? It's just down the road, correct? Just down yes, the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Now, I'm really surprised that this company started in Taiwan, even though it's a Dutch-German company. Can you explain the background of this company? Sure, I can tell you a little bit more about it, and uh, I'd like also to go a little bit into the history of of Taiwan. Uh huh. Uh, if oh, really? You, yeah, just a little bit, you know, because if you look at Taiwan, Taiwan is a, has a very strong background in OEM and o ODM, mm -hmm. so uh, manufacturing for big brand companies. And sometime in the late 90s or mid 90s, Taiwan started to move into OBM, original branding manufacturing. Oh. What do brands need? Brands need design. need design. They need yeah. to look nice. They need to present themselves nice. They need to be to a world, uh, you know, wh which is interested in, in nice-looking products. Mm. And that's where we come in. I now, see. Uh, over ten years ago, we also had uh, the founders of the company here in Taiwan who saw this as a great opportunity because Taiwan had great manufacturing, uh, you know, great uh, electronics and everything. But in design at that time, Taiwan was still in a very early stage. Ah. So how old is this company? It started in... Oh, it started in 2000. 2000. So just oh, around the time when you yeah. see, you know, when, when you see this OPM kind of coming up more and more. Oh, so okay. original branding manufacturing was something that started in the 90s, late 90s. And, you know, now, of course, it's a lot more strong with some very strong branding com brand companies like HTC, like ASOS and so on. But in the early to mid 90s, it was still uh, primarily uh, OEM, ODM culture here in oh, Taiwan. Oh, I see. How, wh why pilot fish? How did this name come about? Well, the name actually, um, <laughs> you know, there's this, um, well, basically it, it has to do with, uh, it's a funny name in some ways. Is it really it also, a fish? It is the real fish that yeah. actually smells the food uh, and it swims with the shark. So oh. the little pilot fish sw smells the food and tells the shark, shark, go over there. And so the pilot fish swims with the shark, the shark eats the food, and the little pilot fish eats then a little part of the food. Oh. Now, what does that mean in the real world, in the world that we are in? That yeah. means we are a small but very smart company that yeah. works with big, powerful companies, uh -huh. and we make them, you know, not to get to the food, but make them go to the money, uh -huh. and then we get a small part of their money, and they get the big uh, chunk of the money. Uh -huh. So everybody's happy in the end, and that's this why the name pilot fish. It's a great name. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, Thank I you. always see videos of uh, these whales and big yeah. fish with little fish on the side, but you never know what the names are. So those are pilot fish, right? Oh, that is so interesting. Ah, okay. So in Taiwan, what is the market like here in terms of design and everything? I know you brought some stuff. Maybe you want to explain better by showing the things that you do? Yeah, you see, design is a very broad field. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of things are design, and design is also sometimes a little bit maybe overused. Uh, but to show you a little bit what we are doing, I brought a couple of products uh, that I would like to introduce and also show to you the thinking that we actually have when we work with our clients. That's good. That's so good. Um, to give you an example of you know, starting with this product, okay. uh, this actually used to be a software company. Mm -hmm. You want to just hold it there for a second oh. so that everybody can see? Yeah. And go on. You can just keep oh, talking. Oh, so I can... Are we <laughs> yes. not off camera? Are we still... No, no, that's okay. <laughs> just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. This used to be a software company. Uh -huh. But they had uh, a challenge. The challenge was uh, that the users who use their software are not digital people. Right. Now, you have to understand, uh, a digital person loves to use a mouse and a keyboard. Right. But the people who use this type of uh, device, and this is for mixing music, they are not digital people. Okay. They don't love a mouse. They don't love the keyboard. And the challenge was really that the clientele of this company just didn't like to use the software. Uh -huh. But they loved the software because it was great, just they didn't like to you know, interact with it. Right. So this company contacted us and said, look, we have this big challenge. How do we overcome that challenge? And uh, we, we, you know, we studied this and we looked into this and we realized that the users, the consumer of, this pro of, of the product of that company, that these people are not digital, but they're analog people. And oh. analog people interact in a different way with devices uh, than, than digital people. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we actually put into this device uh, a motherboard, a PCB, 
we gave it a very haptic, a very uh, interface with no, you know with knobs and buttons, uh, and we designed many many products for this uh, for this company. Some bigger ones, some smaller ones. This is a, something that I could bring with me, so fairly handy. And this has a very analog interface. Mm -hmm. Now this connects to the computer and mm -hmm. to the software, but now you don't have to use a keyboard and a mouse. Mm -hmm. Now you can just use. Uh, your, uh, your, 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 your basic disk device to interact with the software and yeah. you have a much better result. So this company became a market leader in that uh, particular niche market just because they're thinking for users and um. thinking for about users. So then I assume that it will be like older people who use this than young people, is that right? Uh, no, this is actually for, no. uh, for people who love mixing music oh. and people who love to work in that environment. Now, this type of people, you know, not everybody is digital nowadays. Yeah. Uh, the, this type of people, they are mainly analog people, mm -hmm. and they love this type of interface to interact with the software of that company. So this company now is a hardware uh -huh. uh, maker too. I see. Because to them, they think that it's more easier to manipulate instead of using the mouse and the keyboard, right? See, it is a uh, let me give you maybe an example in, in, in a different field. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, I mean, you see this also with devices from many, many manufacturers. The volume button usually stays, stays as a physical button. Yeah. A because button, users, yeah. you, me, almost everybody is very used to uh, actually I interacting with the volume button in a physical way. Mm -hmm. now, it's no problem to do that digitally. Mm -hmm. But who likes to really do this? I mean, there are some uh, you know, products that you have to digitally interact with in order to change the, the volume up and down. Mm -hmm. But users or generally consumers don't like to do that. So this is really about like the user-centric thinking, yeah. thinking about users and making uh, users' life easier. Right. Um, wow. That means you design a lot of stuff because you custom make every single thing to meet the user's um, needs, right? So just like, for example, this other thing, it's an, uh, a hearing aid. You want yes, to yes, I can, I can show you. Uh, there's a couple of uh, that we in have fact, in here. In um, fact, we want to let our audience know that these are all award-winning uh, designs. Both yes, of the these. ones are all the ones are brought here. They're award-winning designs, That's right. but but also they're uh, successful on the market, mm -hmm. which is another you know another topic. But they're also successful on the market. Uh, uh, now this thing here is a hearing aid. Yes. Yeah. If you look at traditional hearing aids, and I didn't bring one with me, but traditional hearing aids are usually very gray, old, ugly devices. They don't have any type of yeah. Uh, they, they they don't really feel uh, attractive to the user. So what it does, it's you know, there's nothing wrong with people who have to use hearing aids. Mm -hmm. uh, but the moment you put a hearing aid into your ear, mm -hmm. um, you, you start being considered, you know, maybe, you know, like a disabled person, like a person who, you know, there's something wrong you with you. You get conscious. You get yeah. conscious. Mm -hmm. Now, we said, why does it have to be like this? Because mm -hmm. nowadays, even young people don't hear well, you know, thanks to discos and MP3 <laughs> players and all this. You said uh, thanks to discos. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, due I to these. Mean. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, also young people sometimes don't hear well. But also, you know, there is a different type of uh, understanding of age. You know, 50 years old is not old anymore. 70 even, you know, is not that considered to be that old anymore because mm -hmm. people want to feel young. They want to feel hip. They want to be part of society. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have to put an old hearing aid, this type of old designs into your yeah. ears, you know, it's not going to make you feel good. I know. So we said, why does it have to be like this? And so we designed uh, together with, uh, with, with, uh, with a company uh, uh, back in 2007. This was one of the smallest hearing aids on the Can market. Can I hold this? Yes, of course. Okay. It, and the thing it's is that... It's really, really small. It's, it's really just about the user because when you get up in the morning, you put it into the ear and you feel good about yourself. This is a sexy device. You know, maybe people don't see it even because mm -hmm. it's, it's hiding behind the ear. But it's about the user and the, 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 the person who has to use this hearing aid and they feel good about themselves. So how does it go? It goes kind yes, of Yes, actually, like there, there is, it uses an ergonomic. There's a flat like area. This. Every person has, uh, yes, right. yes, correct. And uh, there's also maybe these ones a little bit easier to, <laughs> to manipulate. This <laughs> is more, okay. this is designed for the female oh, market, two actually. Yeah, yeah, this was two done two years designs. later and designed for the female market. And this was inspired by jewelry. A ju a ju jewelry, because it's basically about like, you know, People or, or women like to wear jewelry mm -hmm. uh, because it makes them feel good. So this also has an inspiration taken from jewelry. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's not about, you know, showing off, but just about like, oh, I, uh, you know, it, it's inspired by jewelry. And jewelry is something you wear, you put on. And why cannot a medical device uh, oh. be inspired by jewelry? I see. Okay. 
and actually it comes in a yeah, it nice comes in case. a box. You, de you designed this we case did the too, tour right? We still, yeah, we, we did the tour, and then it has a little story. Uh, this uh, it resembles uh, a whale. And whales communicate with sonar, yeah, 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 yeah. and so the, the so the, there is a little bit of a story behind that too. Oh wow! Uh, there's a, the shape of a of a whale. A whale here. from the side. Yeah. yeah, yeah let side, me yeah. see. Okay, first the front, the the top part. Yes. You know, so it's it is very nice. So it's basically the the design. And then we from do. the side, it looks like a whale. Yeah, this is just a little bit of a, to give it a bit of a story and uh, to also, you know, explain that actually it's about communication and, and about how, uh, how, how, how to communicate with each other. And this is all about communication and it's a medical device. And everything is all about beauty. You know, I think uh, uh, people want, you know, want to look good now. I think people do care a lot about um, appearance, the outer appearance nowadays don't Correct, you think but also what we are looking at is more about the user and also okay. how do users interact with devices how to make it easy for users to interact uh, because you see there is a difference that if an engineer a person with a very engineering very smart person with engineering background mm -hmm. designs something mm -hmm. very often to interact with a product like this you also need to have uh, an engineering degree yeah now you know, there, there's more and more, and actually this has started with Apple and the iPhone. Uh, you know, when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone, uh, suddenly you have a device that every little kid and every grandmother, you know, could use. Uh, because it was something that was very simple to use and something that had, at the time it came out, it was, it was really intuitive. Uh, does your company have any part to do with the iPhone? Any, and, well, any we have part at all? We <laughs> actually have some, uh, uh, well, one particular device that is yeah. currently also available on the Apple Store. I didn't bring it with me, uh -huh. uh, but it's a design of uh, like a docking station for business use. Ah. Um, and uh, the story behind it really is that, you know, most people nowadays don't use the land phone anymore. Uh, right. Most people will use their smartphone. Mm -hmm. Now uh, Apple, you know, wants to go also into the the, 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 the business market, and so basically uh, having this phone combined with a docking station uh, that interacts with your internal network. Uh, basically, you need to have uh, something called like a um, like a special box that actually interacts with this. I see. You can then use your iPhone to make internal phone calls. Oh. So we wow. designed something like this, and it's currently also available on the Apple Store. It's called mm -hmm. the iFusion. Mm. Uh, but we also do some designs yeah, for user this interface, thing and, here. and this is something uh, perhaps that you oh, might be interested maybe, in. Maybe maybe you don't have to move it. I think this. Oh, I don't have to move just, it. Okay. Yeah, just uh, yeah. Yeah, basically, it's it's this is a user interface. Uh, f uh, this was actually the very first interactive magazine app in Taiwan. Really. For iPad. Mm. The very first interactive iPad magazine app in Taiwan. And mm. uh, if if you look at the the iPad introduced in you know 2010. By a couple of months later, you had some uh, companies like uh, uh, Richard Branch's Project Magazine, like Wired Magazine, making interactive magazines. Mm. And Taiwan was very, very quick in this. Uh, okay. As a matter of fact, this started in uh, December, January 2000, December 2010, January 2011. Okay. And uh, this was then made into an uh, interactive iPad magazine app. Mm -hmm. And it was the very first one in Taiwan that we worked on. We did the user interface on this. I see. So wow. we made the interaction with it. And then you can basically interact with it. And um, there, you can also download it in the Apple Store. But basically it gives you different modules uh, of, of how to interact with it. And, uh, you know, and, and you can do various fa things with it. So it gives you, uh, you know, this type of like environment. So there are 20, in this particular case, 20 different modules that you can do things with. Wow, very nice. And also, for example, uh, you know, again, it's for the fashion market. You could theoretically, you could dress her up uh, and then, you know, it's good. Really? Up. Yeah, for example here. But there's, there's so many, many other aspects on this. It's like tw 20 mini programs with it. Uh -huh. uh, but we did more with it. We did another one afterwards that had a different type of flow. But the key thinking here is that it's about the user and it's the user I interface to make it uh, attractive mm. uh, and easy to use, that you don't think about the technology, uh -huh. but that you just use it intuiti intuitively. Well, I guess this thing is for me, uh, but I have to first get an iPad, right? Oh, then, uh, yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love fashion. Wow, well, so what is the most selling thing in Taiwan that you've designed, um, you know, among Taiwanese people? See, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I also have to tell you a little bit more of w how we work. Um, 
it is we, we do one particular part and we do that part extremely well. Okay. You know, these are user experiences. This is industrial design. This is user interface. But we are not touching your cha uh, company's channels or sales. So, you know, I always say if a company has very lazy salespeople, it's not our fault. Uh, okay. We cannot right. influence this. <laughs> yeah. If they have bad marketing, we cannot influence this. Okay. We can only do one part of everything and we can do that very well. Mm -hmm. And we do that very well, mm -hmm. but we cannot, you know, educate uh, a person. You know, if a person, if a, if a salesperson sleeps all day long, you will not, even if you have the best product in the world, you're not able to sell it. Right. You know, uh, Apple is a machine. You know, Apple is a, is a very strong, driven machine that has a very clear path and a very clear plan. It is not a bunch of guys who sit together and think that they can do something. They have a very strong. Uh, marketing, very strong sales team, very strong um, product development team. Everything is very strong. That's why they have become uh, one of the strongest companies in the world. Mm, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Right? So that's, that's an important aspect of it, that we cannot influence everything. True, true, obviously, yeah. Well, I understand that uh, Pilotfish uh, is a company that the government is trying to promote because the Taiwanese government is trying to promote the, um, how should I say, it, the design industry. We're going to find out all about this, but let's take a break first.